otherwise you don't need a pipe with a big for sending stuff down. Totally. So, who are you? you I, you're uh, you're on my team. We see you around a lot. You're yeah. you're one of these architecture guys. Introduce yourself, man. What do you so, do? So, dear Carlo, you know who I am. I am a Vittorio, <laughs> and uh, it's five years that I work in Microsoft. Uh -huh. It's uh, yesterday one year that I work in uh, Microsoft uh, Corporation here in the States. I spent uh, four years in Italy in consultancy. In consultancy? Yeah, okay. where I had my chance of making some uh, work at the customer. Okay. While here in Corporation, I still deal with the customer but, uh, on different basis. Uh -huh. And um, specifically, my job here is uh, going after very big corporations, enterprises. And in the entire last year, I made uh, basically briefings and architectural sessions uh, with uh, Fortune 100, Fortune 50, Fortune 10 uh -huh. about uh, Windows Workflow Foundation, Windows Communication Foundation, and Windows Card Space trademark. <laughs> and uh, it was a great year because uh, I had the chance of uh, dealing with uh, such big realities, mm -hmm. and uh, I had the chance to really help them on. Uh, real problems to apply our uh, new technologies. Fantastic. And today, um, you know, we wanted to talk to, about WS Trust, yes. which must be, because when you go into these corporations and talk to their architects and engineers and business decision makers, whoever you're talking, you're talking to the technical people of these companies. I'm sure they're curious about how the stuff really works. They right? certainly are. So let's talk about how. Now, we've had Card Space on Channel 9 before, mm -hmm. right? And it, when it was called InfoCard. Okay. Um, and they've shown us the way that the cards have information in them that the system uses to make requests out to some server that has credentials on it and mm -hmm. SAML tokens and all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. But let's talk a little bit about what's underneath that, and that's the WS Trust layer, right? Yes, they are absolutely correct. Uh -huh. WS Trust uh, is uh, actually at the backbone of a card space, mm -hmm. and uh, it was around uh, way before that. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in my consultancy days, uh, I uh, was used to make use of that a lot. Some tokens are something that you use in WS Security, mm -hmm. which is, again, something that is used and is an enabler of card space, but it's not card space itself. Caspese is a, a way of making all these goodies nicely available to the user. Okay. And exactly as you said, uh, very often when you go to make these uh, kind of briefings, uh, you have somebody that uh, doesn't really stop to the level of uh, just trusting what you say about the feature of the protocol. They keep coming back saying, okay, but what about man in the middle? And every time you realize that if they know exactly how WS Security and especially WS Trust works, mm -hmm. they would not even feel compelled to make this question. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, there is no magic in any place. Uh, underneath, uh, at the protocol level, there is uh, a number of steps that you follow and that uh, result uh, in uh, all these uh, proprieties that uh, we all wish for, like uh, integrity of message or uh, confidentiality. The, it's no magic, it's not simply, simply a tag that you put on it. It's a simple operation that you do. Mm -hmm. Another thing on which uh, I often have to go deeper than the usual uh, literature is uh, key distribution. Mm -hmm. Because of course, uh, everybody is not very keen of uh, spending extra resources because uh, distributing keys, distributing certificates, uh, it's a big deal because uh, you have to set up in place your key system, you have to reach the people that you want to give keys to, you have to maintain because sometimes those they expires and so on. So often we find uh, some sort of uh, resistance, meaning that we say, but why do I really have to do that? Again, the moment in which you actually make the entire picture to them, it ends up that uh, they understand it by themselves. And they can make informed decisions. Mm -hmm. Because uh, sometimes uh, you want the integrity, but you are not interested in confidentiality. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you see under the hood how those things work, uh, you can actually decide what it means in terms of uh, your infrastructure. This may mean that uh, you don't need to set up a certain public key. 
as opposed to that you have to do that, but uh, you may avoid doing something else. Okay. And so on and so forth. So uh, it's uh, an hard experience because uh, there are really a lot of details that uh, are important. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that you do every time. But uh, once in a lifetime, you may probably want to go through all these and then from that moment on be confident of the fact that WS Trust, WS Security really deliver that specific kind of uh, security properties. So that uh, you don't have to just believe that, you know that it goes. And uh, again, I uh, experienced a number of uh, aha moments. You see the customer and say, ah, that's uh, how it works. Excellent. And uh, so I think that uh, it will be worth to capture that. Absolutely, and, and I mean, this will be an episode of, uh, of Going Deep. Uh, and on Channel 9, that's what Going Deep series is all about. Let's talk about what it is, how it works, why it's designed that way. And, you know, whiteboards are always welcome. That and, is uh, But let me just call, make one quick call out to a Niner out there. We have an Italian Niner who's always on the coffee house, little guru. So he's a fellow Italian. I'm not sure where he's from, but uh, he's a university student. But... I mean, uh -huh. clearly you're Italian. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Obvious. My accent, I know. It's, uh, <laughs> also, if you notice my shirt, uh, this is uh, my in, uh, my city. Oh, uh, actually, right. my city is Camoglia, that is a small fishing town uh, in the north coast. But uh -huh. this one is the main city, is uh, Zona. It's uh, in the Genoa slang. Uh, <laughs> so, so I'm proud. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Awesome. Always good to have Italians on Channel 9. So, um, Let's talk about, let's pretend, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an architect at one of these companies, and I, I really want to know, uh, I want to know how WS Trust works. I want to know what's going on. I know I can select, for example, card space. Mm -hmm. I'm only using that as an example. Okay. It's built on top of all this stuff. Okay. Um, I select a card, and something happens. So take me through a scenario, and let's draw some, some pictures Absolutely. of architects. Absolutely. That is great. So, as a premise, we are going to do this regardless of the products. Let's say that uh, whatever we say applies to anybody that uh, wants to follow the standards. Okay. So, I'm not making a Microsoft pitch. This is a WS Star. Now, wait, let's step back, though. What do you mean by that? Are you saying, so WS Star is an open standard that anybody can use? Yes. Okay. And actually, very recently, we made uh, something big. We made what we call the Open Standard Province. We basically took uh, 35 of those um, standards mm -hmm. or uh, specifications and we pledged not to uh, enforce any of our uh, patents to anybody that will uh, try to uh, implement those standards. Cool. This is something really, really big. And in fact, it's a rippling for the industry. So exactly as you said, WSTAR is a set of standards so those are things uh, on paper, not products. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there are products like uh, card space you mentioned it, uh, WCF absolutely, but also others like uh, mm -hmm. Apache and uh, Supportsment, okay. Sun Supportsment. Mm -hmm. There are a number of big names in the industry that are actually basing uh, their strategy on those standards. What I'm going to put on this whiteboard mm -hmm. is going to be valid for uh, any of those implementations because it's uh, about the protocol. Then some implementation will be faster, some other will be slower, some mm -hmm. other will be easier to use, some other will have many things to configure, so maybe less easy to use. Mm -hmm. It's uh, this is all about the implementation. What we do here is uh, what we normally say platform agnostic. Okay. So I could be this moment my sponsor is Microsoft, but uh, this stuff that we are saying applies to just any kind of developer that uses this kind of te technology and uh, protocols. Fantastic. All right. Well, let's check it out. So what's a, what's a good scenario? So a good scenario is, uh, let's say, Friday 1. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So let's say that uh, I wanted to buy wine online. All right. So I have my smart client because we want to talk about web services. And let's say that somewhere in the cloud, on the internet, there is a wine seller. Okay. So let's say that here we have a web service. Mm -hmm. that sells uh, wine. So, so far, there is just this big vacuum and mm -hmm. there is uh, the web service and nothing else. Okay. Now, since uh, in the service-oriented world, 
we want always to be explicit. This web service explicitly says what you need for making business with this service. Okay. So the, practically it says what we call is policy, is a wish list. And in the, this particular case, this web service says that for making business with him, you need a SAML token. Let's say SAML 1.1. SAML is a uh, security token mm -hmm. that is uh, defined and described in a number of specifications and basically is um, something that you use for uh, transmitting security information. Information that can be actually things that you want to know, like for example the age of somebody, mm -hmm. and it can also be cryptographic material. We will get uh, more into details for that later. Okay, now this one second. I want to put the camera on pause because I'm going to put it on the table and get a better angle at this stuff, okay? Perfect. No edits are going on, people. All right, that is much better. All right, sorry to interrupt you, Fantastic. Tutorial. No, no, it was okay. I covered my idea better. Okay. So, as I mentioned, SAML is a security token. Mm -hmm. For the time being, let's just think it's a way of uh, transporting security information. So, information about uh, somebody, like for example, the age, and uh, cryptographic material. We will see what we mean. Okay. So, for example, let's say that uh, I want a SAML token. I want to know your age. And these, in practical terms, needs that uh, I just give you what we call a queue name, let's say an ID which represents this information. So let's say that in this case a schema age. Okay. And then, as a last thing, I want to know these things not just from the body. I want to know it from the department of the driving license. So let's think in the normal case. You walk into a wine shop, mm -hmm. you want wine, you look like young, it's not my case unfortunately, but <laughs> years ago it was still happening, and you enter, you ask for your Barbero or your Montepulciano, huh? and the wine seller asks for your ID. Huh? Typically, here in the States, you use the driving license. In Italy, you can use also the identity card, but never mind. What's the drinking age in Italy? I believe 18. 18. Okay. I'm not sure. Very cool. And uh, here we can do pretty much the same, meaning that it's like having somebody at the shop that says, okay, if you want me to, you put a tablet that says, if you want wine, you need to show me your driving license, and your driving license versus me need of any page. So here you are making everything clear for everybody that wants to make business with you. Mm. So now let's get actually somebody who wants to make business. So here there is our drinker. Okay. Somebody who, who actually wants to make business with uh, this guy. However, you can also think of an application. Meaning mm. that uh, uh, for the sake of example, we can think of one person. But of course, uh, we may have, uh, for example, we are resellers. We may have an automatic application on a backend that wants to call this service. Sure. That's the reason for which I said uh, we are not tied to card space. Card space is only for people. Okay. Anyway, let's make the case in which we actually are a, a person. Mm -hmm. So, somehow, I have to obtain this policy. This uh, somehow is uh, what, we, uh, what we codified as another standard, that is WS Metadata Exchange. It is uh, in, uh, abbreviated version of it. Mm. So, WS Metadata Exchange is a protocol which uh, allows you to obtain what we call metadata. Mm. In this case, the policy is a metadata. So, this is one system that I can use for obtaining this policy. What could happen is also that I already know about this policy. Like, mm -hmm. it's common knowledge that I have uh, to buy wine, I have to show my ID. So, anyway, bear with me. I go here, I obtain this policy, I get it back, and then and now I need to know if I can actually comply to this policy. Complying to this policy just means owning a security token like that. Now, in the case of card space, for example, somewhere in my system, I have a store with a set of cards. Mm -hmm. And actually, those cards represent, among many other things, 
and you said that you already covered it, so I won't go into any detail. They can represent the kind of token that you can obtain. So for example, you may have a card which represents your digital version of a driving license. Mm -hmm. In the case of an application, you may have just any kind of logic that goes through it. So in the picture now, we get somebody else. We get the department driving license, but it's okay. actually somewhere. So let's put it here. All okay. right. Here I have my department driving license, that of course is uh, it's just a web service. For example, at this address. Now let me ask one quick question. Could these web services all, could they be different? In other words, they wouldn't all have to be WSDL compliance stuff like we spit out from ASP.NET? Uh, the technology that you use for uh, implementing this web service is completely irrelevant. Meaning that uh, you may want to be a PHP service, for example. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the department driving license may be a Java shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, this web service may be literally anything, ASP.NET, uh, um, really, really any technology that uh, you use for... Uh, the, what's important is that everybody complies to these uh, open standards. Got it. So everybody speaks the same the protocol. Same language. Absolutely. Okay. So what happened is, again, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I acquired this policy. I go through the, my collection of the things that I can use for obtaining these uh, tokens. And I finally found one. Like, for example, the card which represents my uh, driving license. So now what happened is that uh, this guy has a policy as well. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's not that uh, you go to the department of driving license and you say, hey, I'm Vittorio, I would like my driving license. Mm -hmm. Of course, <laughs> we have to prevent this. Yeah. So what happened is that uh, the department of driving license has a policy as well. And again, it asks for something. Now, let's not break into the detail here. Let's mm -hmm. just say that they ask for uh, a certificate, an X509 okay. certificate. So. At this point, uh, this means, as a first step, that we started to know something about the key distribution. Mm. This guy, or this application, needs a way to prove his identity to the security, uh, to the service uh, that we use on, uh, on the department driving license. Okay. So, this one is my certificate store. And here, we start introducing a bit of notation. One, uh, one nice thing uh, about all these is that uh, we have a visual way of showing uh, how things go. Mm -hmm. Usually, you have to make an uh, effort of imagination. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I make this kind of notation, usually it seems that people get it. So I'm okay. confident that you get it as well. So let's say that uh, we represent uh, our keys uh, like that, like uh, a shape and uh, a key. And uh, since it's here, this represents a certificate, so a public key, a key that uh, everybody can know. Associated to this uh, public key, there is always a private key that uh, we, we are not supposed to tell to anybody. Mm -hmm. This is something that only this guy owns. And in fact, uh, for the sake of this example, let's think that we have it uh, on a smart card. Okay. So, here we have certificates, we have a private key, it's a hidden in the smart card, and we have a public key. Great. So, what I needed to do is making a call to the department of driving license asking for getting this token. Okay. So, this call is the first moment in which we use WS Trust. This call is actually made in a standard way. And this standard is actually called Request for Security Token. It's a message that is made in a certain way. Message. Now, we will make a small approximation, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, we will make uh, a signature which gets all of it. In reality, we don't sign everything, but uh, this is just for the sake of clarity. So, for proving 
to my uh, department driving license, that is really me, I basically have to show off the fact that I'm the owner of this key. We assume that I'm the only one that can use this key, so I have to use it in a way that is unique, that nobody else can do. Okay. So, we do what, in technical term, we call a digital signature. And we do it by using the private key that is inside the smart card. Hmm. Now, what is the effect of a digital signature? A digital signature is something that uh, makes my message uh, protected from any modification. If somebody here in the middle, like a bad guy, gets this message and hmm. makes any modification, here, this web service will know that somebody changed it, and so it will invalidate. Okay. Now, this is a, one of the typical things in which uh, it's required uh, magical thinking. Let's say that you have to believe uh, how it works. Okay. And actually, I would spend uh, two minutes uh, to tell you exactly what it means to make a digital signature. Sure, let's do that. So, let's get out of the picture for a second. Mm -hmm. Let's say that here you have uh, a message. A message is actually something that can be very big. So there are ways, mathematical ways, of obtaining something much smaller that is still related to this message. Let's say that it's an operation that I apply to this message, it gives me something very small, mm -hmm. but it really shows, how to say, like the signature, like the fingerprint of this message. Okay. We call it the hash. Okay, once you have that, you can apply the key that we have seen for encrypting this uh, piece of part. What does it mean, encrypt? Mm. I just combine it uh, in a way with this key that this computer is scrambled. Somebody that sees the encrypted part uh, will really not understand uh, what was uh, the original message. Okay. For decrypting it, you need the public key, because uh, in this case I use the private key. So everybody that owns this public key can actually come here, uh, get this message, make the same operation, obtain the same value here, mm -hmm. use the public key for decrypting it, and what will happen is that they are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody, let's put it back, Key. If somebody, while the message is going, makes any modification to it, like it bites one piece, mm -hmm. what will happen is that uh, once you get this modified message and you apply this operation, this thing will be different. Absolutely, because it will be a mirror of something that's not the same. Exactly. So, once the ultimate receiver receives the message with a signature, mm -hmm. it will take the public key, no, it will make this operation, it will obtain this uh, different value. It will decrypt the signature, and what you will obtain is that those two guys are different. It will be the proof that somebody modified it. So, as you can see, there is no magic in any place. Mm. This is a really straightforward, and it works. It mathematically works. So, all the things that we have shown, are represented in a short form by this S of a signature. Okay. So what we obtained, if we then send the message like this, at this point, the Department of Driving License may have his big database of all the licenses. Mm -hmm. He could take what we used, go into this database, discover that this key was assigned to somebody that had a driving license, mm -hmm. and be happy with that. Of course, this is not enough. This is not enough because uh, what may happen is that uh, not only we want people not to modify and mess up with message, we may say very private, material, private things in this kind of message. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that uh, only the department of driving license is able to read what's inside here. Sure. So the trick that we use is exactly the same. Also, the Department of Driving License will have a certificate store. 
And it relies on Q. So here, we have his public key. Here we have his private key. So, as a citizen, I know what is the public key of the driving license. That is uh, the cryptographic equivalent of knowing uh, how the, the driving license looks like, the pattern, uh, and so on. Yeah. This is the way that you use it for uh, telling, uh, okay, this uh, money is not uh, false, it's not fake. Okay. So, with the only difference that here I can be completely precise. So, if I have uh, the private key, the public key of the department driving license, I can make sure that this message will be visible only by that. And the trick is, encryption. Encryption, mm. exactly. So, by encrypting, using the public key of the department and driving license, I make so that uh, only the department driving license is able to see what's in there. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have a private key, or if you don't have a, a quantum computer that can break uh, uh, cryptography as we know it today, mm -hmm. the only way to see that kind of information is to own this key. So we are completely safe. Okay. Now, here I have to make a small uh, uh, remark for the ones that already know about cryptography. Doing this kind of operations is extremely expensive because uh, every time you make uh, all this cryptography, you use a high level math calculus. Mm. So we really try to use the CPUs as, small, uh, as, uh, as little as possible. So when I say that I encrypt uh, with this uh, key, that is an asymmetric key, mm -hmm. what I really mean is that uh, this key is used to encrypt uh, another key that is uh, different. Uh, it uses a symmetric algorithm, so it's uh, three order of magnitudes faster. And then I use that key for encrypting the entire message. So it's much more performant. Now, in the picture, I don't want to add this because uh, it would be too complex and in a useless way. What we are interested into is that uh, this guy needs to know this, sure. and even if we have intermediate passage. And also another thing is that uh, here it may seem that first I sign and then I encrypt. That is, uh, I'm not implying any order. This is just uh, for giving you an idea, but that doesn't mean that first I encrypt and then I sign. Mm -hmm or that I encrypt the signature. It's simply a way of saying this message is encrypted with that. Excellent. So now we are pretty much covered. Because uh, let's just uh, step back for uh, two seconds for remembering what we are doing. Mm -hmm. We want to buy wine. Mm -hmm. We have seen that uh, for making business uh, with uh, the wine seller, I need this token. Mm -hmm. So I went through my collection of tokens. They may be cards, they may be anything else. And I've seen that I actually have a card that can deliver this thing. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that uh, the token has to come from that authority. Actually, this web service has a special name. It's called the Security Token Service. STS. Because it actually gives me back uh, tokens. Okay. So I am now completely equipped for actually making my request. And in fact, I have a request for security token. And I encrypt for that specific service and I sign with my own physical driving license. So let's see from the viewpoint of STS what happened. I receive a message. Mm -hmm. It's definitely for me because it is encrypted for me. I own the private key, so I can do this. I can decrypt it. Fine, so I'm happy because I know that nobody could have seen it. Mm -hmm. Then I have to make sure that the request really comes uh, from who I believe it comes. So I actually see this signature. I search somehow in my backend. I will have my own logic for deciding if that is valid. Mm -hmm. Then I check my signature. And I have actually certainty that who sent this message is the owner of the private key that was used for signing. So I'm completely confident that I'm talking with the right guy. Excellent. And now, I'm actually ready to send him back what he's asking for. And this one is the entire, uh, the entire point. Mm. <laughs> yes. 
this is going to be tough, but it's going to be in a <laughs> war flight. So, what I'm sending back is a request for security token response. Okay. And now, the stuff that I'm going to show is actually inside the message itself. The first thing that I want to send is the SAML token that I'm being requested. Mm -hmm. So let's start from the very core of this uh, token, and let's come out progressively until we draw it all. So at the very core of this token, there is a, a new key, a new key that nobody knows, that the STS created just for this purpose. Now, when I make this call and mm -hmm. I ask for the token, in this case, uh, I also said that I want it for the wine seller. Mm -hmm. There are cases in which uh, I can say, just give me that uh, and I won't tell you with whom I'm speaking. But we want to make everything by the book. So mm -hmm. in this case, we don't have uh, privacy issues. And uh, we say that uh, once we make the request, we also say we want to talk with this guy. Mm -hmm. So this key will be for talking with this guy. Mm -hmm. How can we make sure that this will actually happen? easy, we have seen how it goes. We need a, a couple of keys. Mm -hmm. So also the wine seller will have certificates. And we'll have its own square key and its own private key. Okay. So this key will be encrypted for this guy. Then, what else do we need? Here, I'm asking specifically for a claim. So the age. So here, I will have my age claim equal. And since uh, here I have my database, mm -hmm. I finally know what is uh, this value. This value is 22. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK, let's say 22. <laughs> so this is actually what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And the wine seller trusts me. This means that uh, if the, trust, uh, the wine seller will know that this assertion comes from the Department of German License, he will be okay with that. So I need to give uh, this guy a way of being sure that it's me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have seen what's the trick. We just need to sign. And we will do exactly that. We will sign it with our own private key. But there's another small implication that this guy needs to recognize that it's really the Department of Driving License. Mm -hmm. So this guy will need to know his key as well. That is, public key can obtain it anyway. So this is actually, if we package it in a nice way, our sample token. Ah, I see. Okay. This encryption may actually envelop also this guy. Because, I, for example, if here I'm putting credit score, mm -hmm. I really don't want uh, somebody to see it while it goes on the network. And you don't want a 22 either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> actually, in this case, I would be more than happy of <laughs> advertising it. Okay, so this is actually something that can be used with this guy. Now, we are actually missing something. Let's assume for a second that we send back this guy. Mm -hmm. Now, this guy can tell for sure that this token is coming from the right place. So it's not that somebody hijacked it somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I can't do much, because uh, this key is encrypted for him. Exactly. So I can't get this key to work. So I need to send back one extra thing. This extra thing is the proof token. Hmm. What is a proof token? Mm. Now I have the wine in the middle. That's cool. Let me get rid of the wine for yeah. a second. <laughs> Grammar. Excellent. Okay, so I need to get the same key, and this time I have to deliver it for him. Mm -hmm. So I will still encrypt it, but this time I will use the key of this guy. And of course, uh, I still want to make sure that uh, I'm not being fooled. And so here, it will be signed as well 
for me. Now, when the, this is the stuff that is uh, sent back in the request for security token response. Okay. And there would be still some stuff for securing the message itself. I'm not going to draw it because that would be in a, that would be too complex. Mm -hmm. What's important is that I send back this stuff, and now I have this stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, let's assume that I got it. Yeah. I got it, and then I see that this part is signed. I'm happy. I obtained what I needed. This sample for this guy. Now, here there is my trick for using it. It's the Visa proof token. So first thing I check whether the signature, signature is okay, and it is. And again, why can I check it? I can check it because uh, I know this guy. Okay, then this key is encrypted for me. So I can open it up and, oh, surprise, I now own a new key. <laughs> So let's, uh, it's not really here, let's put it uh, on the border. Because uh, this uh, key will uh, will die very soon, because uh, I'm using it only for this. So uh, it's a temporary key. Yes, it's uh, let's say just, it's just in memory. It's just a, per transaction. A session key, yes. Session key, great. So, now, I'm finally ready to call this guy, or am I? Actually here, I skipped a, cu a couple of uh, messages, so I'm afraid I will have to roll back. Uh -oh. Here, you should have stopped me. Oh. This guy encrypted with this key, but uh, what is this key? It's a very. Ah. So, here actually, you were right not to stop me. Mm. Because uh, in WS Trust, there are different ways of uh, propagating keys. Mm. So, actually, I may not have uh, this key directly in my database. I may trust. Uh, they can, their client uh, to actually give me one key and say use this key. But if you want to be completely utterly sure, mm -hmm. you want uh, the, uh, the vendor key, what we call the reliant party key, actually in possession of STS. So that the STS uh, already knows that this is uh, trustworthy. So it's giving you an, uh, a token that uh, he is pretty confident you will make a, a right use of it. Okay, well, let me ask a question now. Okay. Um, the only thing that I see with that uh, situation is the SCS server, by definition, won't always know why I want it to tell something that I trust my age. So in this case, if I understand you correctly, you're saying that that key, the square key, mm -hmm. is actually an, a unique identifier for the wine company. Yes. Now, I may want to use STS for something that it has no idea of some sort of unique identifier in the form of a key. Absolutely. So in that case, your original path you were taking is correct. Yes. Okay. This is just an added extra, would it make it faster? Uh, rather than the performance, uh, mm -hmm. here what you want to obtain is uh, to be uh, confident. Confident. So uh, again, it will be in the policies that the uh, identity provider expose mm -hmm. because uh, you may be, I would say, a, a local library, so you don't really care. Anybody, I uh, just come and say, I want to talk with uh, anybody, mm -hmm. and uh, you are not making any big business decision. Sure. You may be the Department of Immigration, mm -hmm. and so every time you somebody asks for the digital version of your uh, physical passport, you may want to make 100% sure that you are talking with the right guy. And so here, you may want to have already obtained the key, so that once somebody comes and say, this token will apply to this guy, you know that you are not talking with somebody you don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. So there is an entire spectrum from uh, it's completely on the client mm -hmm. to I want to mandate. And again, uh, there is difference uh, if you are using, uh, for example, card space. Mm -hmm. And so all these are uh, very disconnected, like consumer facing and mm -hmm. so on. Or you are still using card space or not, mm -hmm. and you are in enterprise environment. So for example, this STS may be one company, this one may be a partner company. Mm. So the fact that you are allowing these, or that these and the policy says, I want to talk with these, could be the, uh, the fact that there is a, a relationship between those two. And mm. so in this case, uh, being able to mandate at the protocol level that I already own this key makes sense. Absolutely. So you can do both. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Here. I'm I getting have... thirsty, man. <laughs> yeah. My vino. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, luckily, this stuff happens here is milliseconds. Incredible. Yeah. Actually. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I want to make this call, so I want to add the signal token to my call. So should I copy it? Yes. Let's copy. So I have the session key. It's encrypted for this guy. It's signed by the Department of Driving License. And I'm using it with my message. My message would actually say, I want uh, X Battle of Barbera. So I'm finally already making my, my call. Okay. Now, how do I use this token? I use the key that's inside for signing the message. Mm. And we have seen that we have a proof token that actually obtains this key. Then, I want only this guy to know what is going on. Mm -hmm. What I am saying, if I'm saying two battles or 15,000 battles. So I want also to encrypt the message. Now, I may still use this key, but in this case, we want to really make the classical trust level. So let's say that I actually also have a public key that refers to this one seller. Now, the public keys are not really big problems. If you think of these, instead of being web services, being a website, mm -hmm. every time you use HTTPS, the first step is obtaining their key. Okay. So it's actually not a big deal every time I write a public key. The big deals are always the private ones. So now I have this message. Let's see, finally, the uh, one seller that receives uh, this message. And let's go backward. Mm -hmm. First thing, I see that uh, this message is encrypted for me. But I may uh, decrypt it uh, now, but uh, first uh, I want to make sure that uh, I'm making business with the right guy. Here I say, let me see the summer token. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm happy. I see that it's signed by the public key, or better, signed by the private key mm -hmm. of the, the Department of the Running License. Okay. So I'm confident that these represent, in, uh, represent a driving license. So let's get rid of the signature. Now, here I have something that is encrypted for me. Actually, let's see, I forgot something. Okay. That is encrypted for me. Since I own my own private key, mm -hmm. I'm the only one in the world that can, can actually open it. And I open it. Now, what I obtain? I obtain a session key and a claim, the age. So, my policy is satisfied. Excellent. It's satisfied because uh, I got the format that I wanted. I got it from who I want, from the Department of Driving Glasses. And here I have age. Note that the age is, uh, now I can still refuse, meaning that, uh, for example, if I'm selling something extremely powerful, for which you have to be a wise man and be 40, you want, to, uh, you want still to be able to refuse, meaning uh, here it's 22, my policy is I sell only to 40 on, I will refuse. Mm -hmm. So the policy does not mean the authorization. I can perform. I can still perform my logic for authorizing. Mm. This key is the extra mile. This key is actually the way in which I make sure that I'm talking with the one that really made the request. If you think about it, here I made a signature with this key. I was the only one able to open it because it was encrypted for me. Who else could it be able to? Only the one who made the request. Exactly. Because the proof token was specifically for this guy. So here, this uh, signature is my insurance that this token is not a stolen token. If somebody would have just grabbed the token 
while it was coming back, like the classical man in the middle. Mm -hmm. He could have added the token as I'm doing now. So I would have been able to get to this point and get that it's coming from the department driving license, it's a single token, and it's encrypted for me. But I know I would I would know that he's not the original owner because I, I needed to see this key in action. And actually, thanks to this signature, I can. So finally, I can get rid of the encryption because uh, it's for me, so I have it. And I have my proof that uh, the, uh, this message came from the original request. So now I'm completely happy. Cool. I got everything I wanted. I have my business case. Here I have the values that uh, the web service wanted. Mm -hmm. So I can or actually start and send back uh, like, yes, your order is accepted. Or for example, I could use this uh, for kickstarting a conversation. Mm. So for example, if this service would be a traffic service, so when I drive, I want to have updates. And I have to call every time. I don't want to do this every single time. So I may want to use this key for creating a sequence of keys that I will use without having to go every time to SDS. That's the entire point of uh, this system. Can you say that one more time? And it's very important. Absolutely. The idea is that uh, I made all these mm -hmm. for uh, respecting the wish of uh, this vendor of uh, having something that is endorsed, uh, not just by myself, but by an uh, authority, mm -hmm. like the Department of Driving License. But uh, once I did that, I don't need to do that over and over again mm -hmm. if in the, in the session uh, I'm still talking with the same service, with the same policy. So I can use what I obtained, I will use what I obtained for gaining the trust of this service. From this moment on, if I just want to protect my interaction, mm -hmm. I can use the key that I had as a base for other keys just between me and the one seller. I don't need to go again through STS. And in fact, we have a specific uh, WSR protocol that is called WS, Secure Conversation, that you can actually use uh, for simplifying the business second phase. Excellent. Because, I mean, the point is, you're going to be buying some wine, which typically when you buy things online, there's a notion of a shopping basket. Yes. You plop in your Barbera, then you decide, well, tonight's a special night, I'm going to get some Amarone, right? Yes. But, you know, let me do a little searching first. So I put it in my basket, I'm taking my time, oh, the phone rings making some phone, you know, discussions as time goes by. So the point is, I don't want to have to do this again when I then click on the Amarone that I want to buy. Yes. This should, the, the server should already know who I am because it's registered this session to this key, right? Yeah. But yeah, if the actually, session dies out, what happens? If the session dies up, what happens is exactly what would happen once you time out uh, with a website. Hmm. So here, we are uh, dealing at a lower level, message level. Uh, we are not tied to HTTP. But in the case in which we are uh, thinking of a website, mm -hmm. if you keep your browser open and you go to answer the door, and oh, you discover that you got something interesting from the post, mm -hmm. and then you get back to your computer and the session is over, mm -hmm. then you have just reconnect. Got it. What really happened, uh, not for uh, every web service stack, but for ours, for example, mm -hmm. is that uh, in the memory of the client, uh, you have what we call a token cache. So it's actually something in memory in which you keep uh, the token. So for example, it may happen that uh, you have to make another call here. Mm -hmm. Once you go through the policy and you find uh, that you actually have something that match the policy, even before making the entire call, mm -hmm. you see if you already obtained the token. If you do, you just use it right away. So the, let's say that uh, the lifetime of a cache uh, ends up being the lifetime of your uh, session. Of course, again, this is a, a bit of a simplification because you may use this token for deriving other tokens, so it's different. But still, that's the general principle, mm -hmm. that Excellent. Well, that is really great. Let's, I want to get another shot of this because that is what it looks like when you use WS Trust uh, to buy some wine yeah. online. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome.
And I don't think I've ever seen that picture before. And uh, actually, let me reiterate this concept. Sure, please. The vast majority of people doesn't need to know this stuff. Mm -hmm. If you know that uh, your interaction is has integrity and has confidentiality, you can be happy with that. You don't need to go at this detail. And in fact, uh, card space uses something very similar, or actually the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't know it. The user just sees this nice metaphor and is able to uh, take advantage of all these interactions without even noticing. Knowing what goes on is useful for you, the uh, developer, mm -hmm. you, the architect. Mm -hmm. Because uh, all these things uh, influence uh, the way in which you distribute stuff. Like uh, if uh, you are a department of driving license, mm -hmm. Here, you can actually see what is the potential of adding a smart card to a very physical plastic piece. On the other hand, you may decide that uh, this investment is not uh, enough for your uh, bookstore. So once you give the card, you just give, uh, for example, you rely on passwords, which is bad practice, let me say that. But it technically, it's doable. It's mm -hmm. simply that uh, the keys that you will use uh, will not have the same cryptographic strength. So apart from the usability, mm -hmm. you may also end up with other problems. But you may decide that for your business uh, that makes sense, because of the investment of creating the cards goes as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, the example was the smart card because it's easy to visualize. But for example, in terms of uh, cards, uh, you may have one managed card which represent your driving license. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second authentication factor that you use, instead of being a smart card, it could be a self-issued card. Now, I'm not suggesting that it would be appropriate in this uh, specific business case. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, uh, you need a key. So once uh, you actually understand it to this point, then you can make your decision about uh, how you are going to obtain this key. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And the, the beautiful thing for the end user is they simply click on a card, in the case of card space, and then the notion of password is out the window. Exactly. But you can still rely on what's going to happen. Precisely. And that's cool. If, if you use a purely WCF, mm -hmm. what here we made an example of a choice of one card mm -hmm. is actually something that usually you have uh, in the configuration. Let's say that in the configuration you can say, which cryptographic material you will use. So things like that, or slightly more complex like that, uh, are still happening. But uh, the way in which you kickstart the process uh, is made uh, in a transparent way. Again, the entire point of making this a standard mm -hmm. was that finally, since uh, we are all in agreement on uh, what we want, uh, the way in which we want to obtain policies, to obtain tokens, uh, to use the tokens uh, with vendors, Mm. We can be completely platform independent. Again, this vendor may be in PHP, this STS may be Java, and the client may be CardSpace. And all the Cartesian product of uh, all the technologies that you may think of uh, that uh, comply with WS Star, and uh, all the roles that you can cover. And what's really, really nice uh, is that this stuff is uh, future proof. Mm. Today we have PHP, SP.NET. Java, and so on and so forth. But uh, you can imagine in the future a different technology. Since uh, these protocols are open, you can actually plug into this protocol. So I'm sure that you already heard the metaphor TCP IP and mm -hmm. Ethernet. Mm -hmm. Once we created the TCP IP and uh, the industry as a whole adopted it, all your application worked uh, exactly as they worked for the Ethernet also for the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi came years later. Still, since there was this uh, decoupling uh, step, the TCP IP, we were able to just reuse exactly the same applications. So you may think of those services still work side by side, even if you change the policy. Hmm. Or you decide that uh, so far you're using a certain kind of technology, you want to use another, you don't have to migrate everything. Everything can work side by side. Excellent. 
this idea of making everything explicit and talking a common tongue is uh, groundbreaking. And in fact, in the last five years, I uh, saw so stuff uh, literally exploded. Fantastic. Well, it's, thank you, Victoria. Thank you for uh, giving me this chance and uh, compliments for not falling asleep. <laughs> not at all. This is incredibly interesting stuff. I mean, I'm sure people are really going to want to look at this picture and understand it and appreciate I mean, I understand it now, so this is good stuff. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Victoria. We'll have you again on Channel 9 talking about something else in the future. I definitely hope that we love a chance. All right. Thank you. Ciao.